we started talking about pain theory in pathophysiology, kind of just planted a few little seeds. And um, this quarter, we're going to water them a little bit and maybe add a little fertilizer and grow them a little bit more, get some little baby plants going. And then next quarter, we're going to talk about the neurological mechanisms of pain. So the reason pain theory is included in this class is because a lot of the modalities that we're going to be talking about are used to address pain. And specifically, they're used to address pain to make an active rehabilitation program more possible for patients. So the learning objectives are pretty slim, meaning there's a lot of information in this chapter, but we're going to focus on these things when it comes to assessment. Um, but I want you to get a flavor for what's going on with pain theory. So then next quarter, when we talk about it again in neuro, it's going to make so much sense. It'll be lovely. So we're going to differentiate between acute pain, chronic pain, referred pain, and radicular pain. We're going to describe the uh, summation in terms of the gate control theory and how that influences our pain perception and the difference between ascending and descending pain controls. So lots of different things in our nervous system work on um, managing pain. And we're gonna talk about some of them, not all of them, and not everything is known about pain theory. That is one reason why I think it's a super interesting area because there's always new stuff coming out. Isn't that interesting? Love it. So pain is the most common system prompting patients to seek medical attention and rehabilitation. In the U.S., chronic pain is more prevalent and more expensive to care for than diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cancer combined. Um, so I always tell patients when they call, sometimes people will call up the PT clinic and they'll say, I can't come into PT today because I'm in too much pain. <laughs> and I tell people, that you come to PT if you're in a lot of pain. We might be able to do something about it. If you're sick, then don't come. We can't do anything about that. But if you're in pain, come in. You might be in less pain after you come in. And likely they will be in less pain after they come in. So pain is um, defined in general as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with or resembling um, that um Oh gosh, that, that sentence got scrambled. Associated with actual or potential tissue damage. I need to fix that <laughs> in the PowerPoint. That's a quote from the book. Um, pain is a conscious experience. It's produced and perceived by the brain. So um, the brain can produce pain with input and without input. So it can just give you pain for the heck of it. It does, it usually has a reason, but um, that is something that is, it can be a real barrier to people um, in their rehabilitation because a lot of people feel like if they have pain, they shouldn't move. And really, it's almost the opposite. If they have pain, they should move. They just need to move in the right way and we can help guide them into doing that. And then also using physical modalities for some symptom relief so then they feel like they can move can be super helpful. So um, pain is really the, the thing that we have to kind of lay out. And they talk about this in the chapter in the book. And you know me, I'm always like, well, just skim through the chapter and pick out what you need. This is one chapter that I think it's useful to read all the way through. Even if you don't understand all of it, just to, like to get a slice of it in your brain. Um, but one of the things that I think is really interesting is the idea of um, distinguishing pain from nociception. So nociception is the neural process of encoding noxious stimuli. So it, it's so our nervous system says, okay, um, here's a noxious stimulus. I'm going to encode it and I'm going to send it up to the brain and the brain gets to decide what to do with it. That's different from pain, which is the, um, what we just said, the um, conscious 
um, sensory and emotional experience associated with that nociceptor input. But um, just because nociception is encoded doesn't mean it's going to be paid attention to by the brain. Sometimes it's just not, um, which, you know, I guess that's a, probably a good thing. But the nociceptive system itself in the nervous system is composed of peripheral and central afferent neurons, so afferent going towards the brain, and immune cells are involved in the nociceptive system as well. Um, and we'll talk more about that next quarter. But the, um, the nociceptive system is responsible for transmitting and processing um, nociceptive input. So it's activated by intense thermal, mechanical, or chemical stimuli. Um, and it's modulated by the nervous system and can be facilitated or inhibited. So we have anti-nociception processes in our nervous system and we have pro-nociception, like things that give you more pain. Most nociception never results in consciously perceived pain. So just because you have a stimulus doesn't mean you're gonna consciously perceive that as pain. I think that's an important thing to understand. And it also gives us some control as to what we're going to perceive as pain. So a lot of what we do in therapy is we do pain management education that has nothing to do with um, physical modalities or physical exercise or um, any kind of treatment we give people, but we educate them about how their nervous system works to help them understand it better. And that can be pain management system in and of itself. Really interesting. So the peripheral pain um, pathways are primarily afferent neurons, peripheral nerves that project input from the periphery to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. So incoming signals are organized and separated according to the nociceptive function in the spinal cord. And modulated input is then transmitted to multiple areas of the brain. So we get a ton of information and the spinal cord processes some of it and says, okay, I'm gonna send this, I'm not gonna send this sends it up to the brain, the thalamus processes some of it, says, I'm gonna let this go through, I'm not gonna let this go through. Um, and then the cerebral cortex gets to chew on it and decide what it's gonna pay attention to. So there, it's not just like flipping a switch and turning on a light, it's a much more complicated process. So nociceptors are a, a sub, category of those peripheral nerves. And they're primary afferent neurons that transmit noxious stimuli. That's their job. Some of them, some of the other um, peripheral nerves transmit light touch and um, pressure and stretching and things like that. But nociceptors, their job is noxious stimuli. Something's noxious, they're taking care of it. They're encoding that information. So the, the afferent nerves that are... Um, most reactive to noxious stimuli and produce nociceptive input are A delta fibers and C fibers. Um, some of the other things like light touch and um, pressure and that sort of thing are um, encoded by A beta fibers. And we'll talk about those guys a little bit later. But the primary nociceptors are A delta and C fibers. So our peripheral nociceptors um, the, the A deltas and the C fibers. A deltas are small myelinated fibers that respond to intense mechanical stimulation and heat or cold. So have you ever been to like the massage therapist and they're like pushing really deep or really hard and it goes from like, like, oh, that feels good to like, oh, wait, 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 that hurts. When you get to the wait, 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 that hurts part, that's when your A delta fibers have been activated. There's like, whoa, wait a minute. No susception. <laughs> and when you're to the like, oh, that feels really good, nice deep pressure, that's your A betas. So usually the sensations, and same thing with heat or cold, like, oh, that hot pack feels really lovely. And no, wait, 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 it's too hot. The A deltas are the wait, 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 it's too hot fibers. So um, the sensations that you generally um, associate with A delta fibers are sharp, stabbing, or pricking sensations. So like, oh, but you know, those sharp, painy things. Um, usually those sensations are not blocked by opioids. Interesting, right? C fibers are tiny, unmyelinated fibers. So myelinated fibers transmit signals faster. So they're the fast. 
like stubbed your toe, stepped on a tack sort of sensations. And the C fibers um, are small and unmyelinated. So it's slower. It's like the throbbing, dull, aching, burning, tingling, or tapping pain that keeps you up in the middle of the night and you have to get up and take Advil or whatever. <laughs> so the sensations of A delta fibers are usually sharp and immediate and C fibers are dull, throbbing, aching, burning. So usually C fiber input is slow onset, long lasting, diffusely localized. Does this sound familiar um, for acute versus chronic? Um, C fiber pain is usually accompanied or is often accompanied by sweating, increased heart rate and blood pressure or nausea. So those sympathetic response things, those autonomic responses. And C fiber pain is blocked with opioid medication. Interesting. Very interesting. So um, there's some there's some terminology that goes with this neuropathy and nociplasty. So anything with plastic, plasty means change. Something's changing. So when we have when we have neuro and anything with pathy means there's a disease process or a degenerative process going on. So neuropathy is a disturbance. Um, of function or a pathological change in a nerve. It can be medical like diabetic neuropathy or mechanical like a herniated disc, or it can be idiopathic, like they don't know what's causing it, but there's some kind of change in the function of the nerve, a pathological change. Um, nociplasty is the ability of the nerve system and immune systems to undergo functional and structural changes that alter nociceptive processing. So the nervous system is plastic. The nervous system can change and it's changing all the time. So neuroplasticity um, is the umbrella term, which includes nociplasticity, but it includes other things. So neuroplasticity is involved in learning and all those other things. But when um, nociplasticity is the nervous system and immune system actually change um, in a way that alters nociceptive processing. So it could be that, um, Sensations that weren't perceived as pain before are now perceived as pain. That's a problem. So um, changes that are caused by nociplasticity are perpetuated by repeated activity and reinforcement. Interesting, right? So our peripheral sensory pathways, um, we had our peripheral nociceptive pathways with the A deltas and the C fibers. Um, our peripheral sensory pathways are A beta fibers. They're non-painful sensations that are related to vibration, stretching, and mechanical pressure. Um, they can be involved in abnormal prolonged pain perception, but most of the time they're just telling us like, oh, there's that vibration, stretching, or mechanical pressure, or light touch even. Um, the pain quality depends not only on the type of peripheral nerve activated, but also on the type of tissue being stimulated. So peripheral sensitization allows non-noxious stimuli to trigger nociceptive input. So there's a particular type of peripheral sensitization that's called allodynia. And that's where um, sensations that used to be are, are normally non-painful are painful. So the test for it is they brush you lightly with a little brush, and if that's painful, um, that's allodynia. So a normally non-noxious stimulus triggers no susceptive input. So primary afferent neurons project input to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. We said that before. Incoming signals are organized and separated according to no susceptive function in the spinal cord. And then modulated input is transmitted to multiple areas of the brain. So the dorsal horn, there's a lot of processing that goes on in the dorsal horn, including what we're gonna call gate control. So the central, once it's passed up from the dorsal horn, the a spinal cord, the peripheral fibers um, project to the dorsal horn gray matter and the spinal cord connects directly um, or via interneurons to that gray matter. Um, the interneurons are subject to pain gating. Physical agents are thought to control pain in this manner. So a lot of the physical agents that we use to address pain, ice, heat, east and blah, 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 address pain by gating at, in the spinal cord. Okay, so that basically the pain, you close the gate and the pain never gets up to the brain. 
So central, that's peripheral pain modulation, also known as ascending control. So you're stopping the ascendant, the um, the ascending pain from going up to the brain. Descending pain control is central pain modulation. So we have um, a system in our body that's now known as the pain matrix in our nervous system. It includes sensory, motor, and limbic systems of the brain and produces three distinct outputs. It produces conscious perception of pain. So the pain matrix, whether or not it's getting input, it can give you conscious perception of pain. Um, it, it produces physical action and motor responses like taking your hand out of the fire. <laughs> That's motor response. Um, and it also activates homeostatic systems. So homeostatic systems include the sympathetic nervous system, your fight or flight response. Um, and the sympathetic nervous system is largely responsible for maintaining optimal blood flow in your organs. Is that going to affect healing? I think it is. So the neuromatrix theory of pain, the pain matrix unconsciously integrates nociceptive and non-nociceptive sensory input with biological, sociological, and psychological factors. So the idea, the neuromatrix or the pain matrix is determining if there is a threat to the body and whether or not you need to be protected from it. So if it perceives that there is a threat and that you need to be protected from it, a pain experience is produced. Um, the whole idea is it's intended to alert the person to danger and motivate them to protect their body tissues. So if you didn't have any pain, um, you'd always be bumping into stuff and sticking your hand on hot things and whatever, and you wouldn't protect yourself. So pain really does serve a useful biological function most of the time, as long as you don't have any nociplasticity going on. Nociceptive input in the pain matrix is distributed to many sensory, motor, and emotional structures of the brain. So the pain matrix is made up of areas of the brain involved in the pain experience, including all those things listed there. So lots of input in the brain and all over the brain too, not just in one area which is super interesting. Central sensitization involves the facilitation of nociceptive impulses in the central nervous system. So there are three aspects of it. Facilitation of synaptic transmission in the spinal cord, inhibition of in the endogenous opioid system, which can help stop pain before it starts, and altered processing of nociception in the brain. Um, the central sensitization can cause pain that doesn't fit a typical anatomical or neurological distribution. So that's um, when pain's not working for you. So pain modulation and control can be ascending or descending. Ascending control is modulated in the spinal cord and we'll talk, call it gate control theory. And we'll expand on that next quarter. Um, but the pain severity is determined by the balance of excitatory and inhibitory inputs in the spinal cord. So basically, if there's more inhibitory inputs, you won't get the pain signal going up to the brain. So it, it stops the ascending pain. The endogenous opioid, opioid system controls pain by binding to opioid receptors and keeping the pain from descending. So you don't get the pain signal. So in the first one, the pain, the nociceptive signals never get to the brain. And so the brain doesn't produce um, pain output. In the descending in the endogenous opioid system, um, it suppresses the descending signal so you don't get the pain output. So ascending versus descending. In gate control theory, nociceptive signals are inhibited at the spinal cord by non-nociceptive input. So signals are integrated with input from other primary afferent neurons, interneurons, immune cells, and descending inhibition via the endogenous opioid system from the brain. So many physical agents are thought to control pain in part by supplying non-nociceptive input to the sensory nerves, closing the gate um, to transmission of pain at the spinal cord. So if you put, if you do soft tissue mobilization, that sensory input um, gives you some non-nociceptive input, some inhibitory input to close the gate. If you do ice or heat or um, even being in water, 
stimulates a lot of sensory nerves and can have this effect. Um, so pretty interesting, right? Pain can be acute or chronic. It can also be referred or radicular. So we've talked about this before. Um, acute pain is a direct result of actual or potential tissue injury due to wound, disease, or invasive procedure. And it's usually less than 30 days in duration. Chronic pain, and it's usually well localized. Remember that? Um, chronic pain is, persists longer than typical for a condition or is associated with intermittent or chronic disease and typically lasts at least three to six months, so a lot longer. Um, and includes common diagnoses like fibromyalgia, neuropathy, complex regional pain syndrome, and many, many other um, chronic pain diagnoses. Referred pain is where visceral pain refers to a somatic area of the body, and it can be pretty closely localized. So heart pain tends to um, refer to the um, the neck and left arm and left side of the chest. Um, gallbladder pain um, refers to the shoulder and the um, flank area. So you can, a lot of times with referred pain, it's because we don't have the same sensors in our um, internal organs. And so they actually synapse with um, some of the peripheral nerves and send it to some place where we can detect it. Um, radicular pain is where you have um, pain radiating from usually a spinal area. And so a lot of time, we'll talk about that with regard to traction, um, about whether pain is centralizing or peripheralizing. Um, and so the pain radiates from one area to another, or radicular pain. Um, so neuropathic pain is usually accompanied by signs or symptoms of neurological dysfunction, such as paresthesia, which is um, pain, not painful, abnormal sensations like twitching, zinging, um, tingling, that sort of thing, itching, anesthesia, where you just can't feel anything at all, or weakness. Nociceptive pain has a clear stimulus response relationship with the injury. Nociplastic pain, sometimes um, also associated with neuropathic pain, can result in symptoms that no longer reflect the state of tissues. So it's widespread, inconsistent, and not an illogical distribution. Um, central sensitization and psychosocial pain um, are types of nociplastic pain. So central sensitization tends to be worsened by cold and it's characterized by allodynia and hyperalgesia, which is where non-painful symptoms, non-painful input is interpreted as pain. And psycho psychosocial pain is where psychological processes play a large role, including cognition, emotion, context, and environment.